Okay, hi brothers and sisters. Um, we're here for a little video, quick little video. Um, I have not gotten into the study of wisdom yet. Um, considering the mess this computer is in, the old one that I relied on finally conked out on me. Um, and this Lenovo that I bought repurposed is just blinking, blinking, blinking. I actually had to go download a new camera app to record this little snippet of a video so I should warn you I don't know when I will be back up and running again for any more videos it's gonna take me a while to purchase a new computer I can see that um, I'm lucky I'm gonna be doing this short little one but in the meantime let's look at it I'm just giving you fair warning for anybody who might be looking for my videos the few that do um, we're going to look at this verse and we're going to verify the meaning of one word in it. And it does not mean the power to purchase as in you've been taught that you have to be purchased by something. Um, so the verse that we're going to take a look at, a quick look at, is found in Revelations 3.18. And I am, uh, I haven't thought too much about the studies yet. Um, I just was looking at the Bible, like I often do in different verses, and I stumbled upon this, and I said, well, we really need to look into this, because about the word buy, and what it really meant, and they'll want to tell you, it does not mean the one that I'm about to tell you when the Old Testament validates that that was the meaning of the word buy. So Revelation 3.18, it says, what does it say? And it's wisdom counseling you. And it says, with wisdom, you will make your war, right? Um, and she's your counselor, and she shows you how to do that. Um, King James, I counsel thee to buy of me. See, there's the word buy. Buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness does not appear, and anoint thine eyes, with Isaph that thou mayest see. Now, when I thought of the Isaph here, I thought immediately of the balm of Gilead for some reason. Now, I would never recommend there's an actual balm of Gilead on the market saying that it's the actual balm of Gilead. I would never suggest rubbing that on your eyes. I am suggesting that possibly that is what is in view with the balm of Gilead. Though I also see... Um, the behemoth in Job 38, the bones of the behemoth, um, we know that they gnashed upon this great government of God, which was made up by the women, the wise women, particularly inside the nation of Israel. And we see them piercing upon her, they surround her like dogs, and they pierce upon her. In Psalm 22, they rip her down, they rip her apart, and it says, can these bones live again? Those are the bones that's in view, actually. And so I think... Um, also, the balm of Gilead could have something to do with healing the bones, bringing them back together, uh, so that these daughters will work in harmony where there were fissures that were being caused by those false uh, bows, shooting arrows, uh, the lying words of Baal, um, to rip and pierce upon these daughters that should have been holding together and were not. And you find that in Job 38, it speaks of the power of the bones of the behemoth. And so I think of the balm of Gilead, possibly um, as either a uh, sieve that healed the bones, uh, arthritic, ripping, whatever. Um, and, or the eye sieve, as mentioned in this particular verse, it just takes me back to, where is it, counsel of me. Um, it says, is there no balm in Gilead? It's in Jeremiah, I forget the exact chapter. Um, so it says, counsel, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in a fire, that thou mayest be rich and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness does not appear, and anoint thine eyes with Isaph. So what's the idea to anoint your eyes? Open your eyes. You're currently bowed down at the feet of the idol, and you are naked because you are playing a harlot in idol worship. You do not see God. You do not know God in this condition. That thou mayest see. All right. So we're going to pinpoint a word here, and it says, counsel of me to buy, all right? Now, that does not have the understanding that most wants it to mean. 
And we'll look at what they tell you here in the Greek, but they won't tell you the real meaning of it. No. They want you to focus on the blood of a man purchasing you. No. That's not what purchased you. No. Go try it. Go try washing in blood. It doesn't wash you. Clean water does. And go try to buy with blood in a market. You're not going to buy with blood. It's, it's opening your eyes. And that eye salve is going to heal the daughters. It's spoken of in Jeremiah. Is there no balm in Gilead? Where is the healing of the hurt of the daughter of my people? There is no healing under a religious lie that teaches man as God. There's none under that. Um, so it says, counsel of me, counsel of wisdom. It's the counsel of wisdom that's going to open your eyes and heal you from this religious lie that has really been harmful to so many daughters. Um, and, and so much violence has been perpetuated uh, against her under this man-made religious lie that we are told in Daniel 2 that Baal is that idol that all these kings, wicked kings, built upon and is standing in the land. We know Jesus is the feet of that idol. Um, anyway, so what does buy mean? Well, your word is 59, Strong's Greek, 59. To buy in the marketplace, purchase. Okay, the ancient marketplace town center properly to make purchases in the marketplace as ownership transfers from seller to buyer. Um, and it continues, stresses transfer, where something becomes another's possession. In the salvation context, is not redeeming, buying back, but rather focuses on how the believer now believes belongs to the Lord as his unique possession. I don't belong to anybody but God, and that is not a man, which is what they're telling you here. It means he purchased you with his blood. Christ purchases all the privileges and responsibilities that go with belonging to him. And they'll tell you he purchased you with blood. Well, now, let's look up. Is it up here? It's not up here. That's fine. So let's do this. Let me put this down. Sorry. It's been so long. It's been four days since I did this study, and I had hoped, but I could not access my camera app, so I had to actually download a camera app in order just to use it for this. Uh, so define buy. It's going to give you two definitions. To obtain in exchange for payment, yes. But you know what number two says? Accept the truth. Counsel of me, the gold, which is the truth. The truth is what you are counseled by wisdom to receive. And that's not blood. That's not a payment of blood. God says, I ask no blood of you, and you don't wash in blood. So, how can we verify that this very word, buy, does not mean purchasing power of money behind it? You know how we're going to verify that? Oh, where is it? It is found in, um, let me see here. Okay. So we're going to go to, since I can't find it, should have been up here. Sorry, I, I apologize. Um, we go to Isaiah 55 to validate the meaning of this. Right? Let me counsel you. Wisdom is saying, I'm your counsel. But you wouldn't listen to me, wisdom says, when I come. So what does it say here of the purchasing power? Come, everyone, who is thirsty. Come to the waters. And you, without money. You see? Come by. They want to slide in blood. Blood don't purchase you, the truth does. You're purchased by the truth. Isaiah 4, 4, I will wash the blood off of my daughters. How are you washed with this pure water? That you are counseled to come and drink of without 
any purchasing power at all. You don't say, oh, I have blood. Doesn't say that. Does not say that. Come, everyone who is thirsty, come to the waters, and you without money come buy and eat and drink. Why do you spend money on what is not food and your wages on what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good, and you will enjoy the choicest of foods. Um, so we get our understanding there of what it means to buy. What does it mean to buy? If it's without the power to purchase, back to the definition of buy. Do we not? What is it? Accept the truth. That's what buy means. It means to accept the truth. That's why wisdom here, and it is wisdom, I counsel. What's counsel? I give advice. We take counsel together. We consult. Who do we consult? We consult wisdom. She tells us this. She says, counsel of me. Who's the me? You know, sense and reasoning. Baal is not your lord and master. I watched a short little clip. I couldn't stomach it. Um, and he was trying to say that men were, yes, the reason why, uh, you know, Christ is head of the church, even as your husband is head of his wife. Well, you don't want to hear this, girls, but he is Christ. Like, is he? You forget we're the ones that live with you. We know you better than anybody else, and we know what's up here. <laughs> you forget that part of that, don't you? And the whole time we're listening to you tell us how Christ-like you are. And then watch you in your everyday life, we realize that Christ must be a pervy to some degree. Yeah, you don't want to hear that. Listen to the things that comes out of their mouths. And then you try to, to advocate that husband is Christ-like and you better bow to his head? That just takes you back to the, to the harlot, exalted in man's heart in Isaiah 47. She says, no one sees me. <laughs> because he's what's exalted. She's what's exalted in his heart. And we as the wives who are married to these men, who are supposedly Christ-like, gets a taste of that. You can pretend you're above everything, men on the pulpit, teaching yourselves as if you're Christ-like. Really? Look at the bloody world. And you can blame the women all you want. You wanted the covenant with the harlot spirit. You denied the key of David in the beginning. You did not want her. We validated that all through the Old Testament. That's why you are to counsel I counsel you to buy from me gold, the truth. Having been refined by the fire, by the trials in the earth that you've had to overcome, we women have been forced to drink the myrrh in the law. The bitterness that come upon our head, the reproach that is upon our shoulders, the burden upon us to deliver our children into righteousness, not yours. She says, my own vineyard I have not kept. My mother's sons were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyard. I'm the one that has been carrying the burden of the children upon my shoulders. And when I say me, I mean the women, the daughters of Israel, the descendancies. Carrying the burden, that's what the burden of the Lord, the burden of the Lord in Jeremiah 23 was. The accusations by Baal saying she could not deliver children. Well, I'm pretty darn sure man don't. But he sure took credit as father giving life to everything. And he knows that that exalts him in the land. It does. So, by the eyes, open your eyes. That's what she's saying, open your eyes. And in the minute that you do open your eyes, you pull yourself up from the feet of the idol that has made you naked. You are void of a garment, right? And this takes us, I wasn't going to do it. We could go into a lot more information here, um, as usual. But we'll go to, um, let's go here. Okay.
Isaiah 59, because I had this in context now, four days ago, seems like forever ago for me. Um, yeah. So this takes us to the uprising of the women because they have been carrying this burden for so long upon them. We know man wrote the law, wrote her out of the law, wrote her as a person out from under the law, her good, she don't have good, she's, she don't have rights. Uh, women has to fight for this right to exist even uh, in cycles. It comes around over and over and over because that comes back to Adam's pride, which is we know Satan is Adam. Um, Beelzebub. Bel is another name for your husband. Beelzebub is another name for Satan, who is leader or ruler over the demons. Um, so it all links back to Adam, the accuser, who accused her, knowing that he could take her throne, which was the right to write the laws in the land. And so his accusations become, well, she's down at my feet. She wants to play my harlot. Of course she don't want her rights. She's fighting against herself to have rights. Most of them in religion are. Watch them. They've had it beat in their head. Yeah, through violence. That's why it's the beast system. But, um, see, now I didn't write down exactly what I wanted to read. So let's begin in Isaiah 59. Behold, the Lord's hand is not short that it cannot save. Neither is her ear heavy that it cannot hear. So, there we go with your ears as well. Your ears have to open as well as your eyes. But the Lord can hear all things, and she's watching all things, because we know who the presence of God is. It's identified as these daughters in the beginning, that was your cornerstone, rejected in the very beginning, and are reborn of the dust of the earth. At the end, after going through the trial uh, by fire, she's tried by fire, she bears the bitterness, the myrrh upon her, the burden, uh, which is a deliverance of children into life. That burden's upon her to do. And we, uh, daily she bears our burden. It's stated in Psalm 68. The Lord that's in view there is daughter Zion. Her number is 136. It's a reference to these women that is also in view in Ze Zephaniah chapter 3, where it says the reproach of this was a burden unto them. The reproach that, oh, you know, down at man's feet, on your head. All this is a reproach unto her. It's a blaspheme against the Holy One is what it is. And that is why it's a reproach on some of these women's shoulders. Many are called for your chosen. It's not easy to pick yourself up from the feet of the idol. Um, and that is why wisdom is counseling you and advising you to listen and to open your eyes. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid her face from you that she will not hear. So what's that sin? We discover this woman bowed down at the feet of a male idol. We know there was two idols in existence, male and female. We know the kings moved to tear the female one down, realizing and recognizing, keen like a dragon, that that was going to empower him over her, which is why we get the idol in Daniel 2 yet again, as a male idol that these successive kingdoms, all ruled by men by this time, was putting in place for a woman to bow down in a yoke on her neck, bearing the myrrh and bitterness of the law upon her shoulders, and also the deliverance of the children. She just, however, was raising them up and teaching them his religious lies and laws. And she was not tending to her own vineyard. So the iniquity is her playing man's harlot, which is also the same accusation that Satan, Baal, husband, Adam, the first Adam, is making in the heavens. Um, and yet there's a court case pending. She has to bring forth her case. Um, now allow me to set the case in order, she says. We've discussed this. So, verse 3, for your hands are defiled with blood. Yeah, washed in blood. There you go. And your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies, your tongue have muttered perverseness, muttered injustices. Well, when you tell half the population that she is not equal to rights, goods, um, I would say that that's going to cause some large injustices that does not come from God's law. It comes from man-made religious lies. That's where it comes from. None calleth for justice, or nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity. That's your word here. You know what this is? I believe vanity here is male idols. 
I'm not 100% sure. I believe it is. If not, we can link that male idols uh, in other verses. Uh, that says pretty much the same thing. Um, they trust in empty words and speak lies. So is the word I'm looking for vanity? Emptiness. See, they, they, that's what makes it so hard to find this. Um, they trust in empty words and speak lies. They conceive evil and bring forth iniquity. Um, let's look at lies. Three. Um, deceit, deceitfulness, deception, emptiness, empty, false, worthless. So the word worthless takes us back to worthlessness, the sons of Belial, which are the same as Baal. Um, in the sense of desolating, while well, she became a desolate spirit, we see in Isaiah 54 when he married Baal himself, a woman who basically will... Um, Teach all of his worthless um, lies. So again, figuratively, this word, yes. Vanity is figuratively idolatry. So idolatry is idol worship. As false, subjective, uselessness. So we were to have no idol before us, neither male nor female. We were to follow the way of God. I counsel thee to buy of me gold. Try it in the fire. The truth. The truth. Listen. Open your eyes and 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 counsel of you. I advise you to listen to this truth, so that you walk not naked. Laodicea is the final church, and you can say, "Well, I'm part of the Philadelphia church. I hear that one all the time." Or I'm part of this church. Or I'm part of that church. No, you're part of the end time church, which is Laodicea. And they were idle, and, and we broke it down under 8th day Dunning's last video that's posted there. How every church, the fault that they everyone had was idol worship, Baal. Husband as Lord and God. That's why you're naked. You walk naked. You think you're so rich. Oh, I'm so rich. I found Christ in blood. No, you're as poor as poor can be. And you are walking naked. You have no garment to clothe yourself with. Because you are bowed down at the feet of the idol. That's why she says, counsel, I counsel of thee. Um, I advise thee to buy of me. To believe. To believe the truth. The water that will wash the blood off. Because having a male idol as God has allowed man to write the law. Which was your birthright. That's right. He removed it from you. She came in the beginning and was rejected, and she comes at the end. And if there's one thing Joshua says, he says, You can blaspheme me. I'm not going to blaspheme her when she shows up. Why? Because the law is on her tongue that you're to, to follow. And you will either be find, found holding the seal of God in your forehead or holding the seal of the beast system in the Mark 666, which we knew come from uh, Solomon shaping, um, which was bowing down to Baal as if he was Lord and God. That all came through him with the key of Solomon, which was in total opposition to the key of David, which was the righteous daughter's rights to write the law. He tore her house down, house in the force of Lebanon. We've identified all of this. Okay, so we know that the word here is idolatry for vanity. None calleth for justice and no one pleads a case with integrity. Okay, go back. My computer ain't working. There we go. So where does she plead her case with integrity? Okay, so we know this one. On this channel, we've studied it so much. That's Isaiah 50. This is turning into a longer video than I intended. So Isaiah 50 will... Is it Psalm 50? No, it's Isaiah 50, isn't it? See, I get, I get Isaiah and Psalm confused most of the time. Let's see. Yeah, I, I had that wrong. It's Psalm 50, um, where she sets her case. Oh, not joke. 
That's all. 50. And we know she says need to set the case in order. Because you see, Baal has fell into his own snare. Baal is your husband who wants to believe he's your head and he's your Lord and God. And you must listen to him because he's Christ-like. That's the snare they laid for us to fall into. And we did for a time. We know the scorpion is symbolic of what struck her on the heel. Just as the snake is symbolic of the poison that struck her on the heel. And it says what? Has Israel stumbled that she should fall? She stumbled when he struck her heel with poison. And made her fall. Well, she stumbled to believe this lie and went to sleep. It says she goes to sleep in this religious lie. But God promises to wake her at the end to the truth. She stumble that she should fall. She actually awakens up with the truth. <clears throat> right? And then she crushes his head. And his head is bare. Jesus, idol worship. Uh, and all the other male motivated religions that's allowed uh, a male god to come into existence like Muhammad, uh, Yeshua um, of the Judaism used to be, you can't refer to it in any sense of a he or she and yet they'll say he now. But what does she say in Psalm 50? Thou sittest and speakest against thy sister. It wasn't a brother, it was your sister that you spoke against. It holds two male, it holds male and female and it holds firstborn sons, firstborn sons. But we won't explain that one away. We'll just say, oh, firstborn son, firstborn son, because it's a world ruled by men with harlots bowed at the feet of male idols as if they're Lord and God, and he is not. Um, so you sat and you slandered me in court. That's what you did. You slanderous thine own mother's daughter. That's who you slander. That's who gets to drink the myrrh in the law system because you took my rights from me. You yoked me. And what the yoke is a reference to is the burden of the law system on womankind's neck made by her brother who slandered her and said she wants to bow to me as a harlot in the earth. Look, watch. That's Baal, your husband. That's Satan, the accuser, Beelzebub in the heavens, accusing you daily before your very own mother. And she gets mad and she turns her back on us because she says, you're bowing to him. And you're allowing this lie to exist in the land. So she gets mad. <clears throat> and she says, fine. You want a man as your God, you can have him. But you're going to find out what he does to you in the end. If you ain't discovered what this has done to you, you're not paying attention. Your ears aren't open. You're not opening your eyes. You're not listening to wisdom at all. You are listening to Baal off of the pulpit. Satan is right to accuse you as being wanting to be a harlot, wanting to be debased and defamed in the land. Go to Zephaniah 3. The ones to whom it is a true reproach rises up and she says, I will get thee fame and glory in every land where they put you to shame. And it is our mother speaking to us, the daughters who are strong enough, who are preserved as well in that truth, to stand up and remember that truth. So you slandered thine own mother's daughter. These things you did and I kept silence. What does she say? Isaiah 42. Long time have I held my peace. Now will I go forth as a travailing woman. See, she's the one that kept silence. That thought is that I was a man altogether such as one of yourself. You thought I was a man. I'm not a man. There's male and female on earth. I am not made in my father's image. I am made in my mother's image. And I will stand for her house. I'm not standing for an idol's house anymore playing God and telling me I have to listen to him yoke and take my rights and goods from me. I'm not. That was never God's way. That's Baal's way, wanting to play God in the land. And the harlots that do exist... And it will come back on your head. What you create, it says, will come back on your head at the end. Especially if you don't want to stand up and discover the truth. And not hold the seal of God. Which is the belief system of God. Walking in the Ten Commandments of God and in the path of righteousness and truth. Um, so, these things you, thou has done and I, I remain silent. I didn't stand up and present my case. Stand up, God. Present your cause. That's what it says. 
That thought is that I was altogether such as you, a man. But I'm going to reprove you, and I will set them in order before your eyes. That's the Koalath seeking the Proverbs, which is a little book that she puts together, holding the truth. Now consider this, you that have forgotten God. The presence of God was the camp of Mahanaim, which you find with the Shulamite. Jacob refers to her as the camp of God. Lest I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver. She's holding 144,000. These are the first fruits born out of the dust of the earth, remembering the truth of old. And Adam says, ah! Uh, Satan says, ah! She has no witness in the land. We've killed God out of the land. That's what he says. Whosoever offereth praise glorifieth me. And to him or to her that ordereth his or her conversation aright will I show the true salvation of God. The true salvation is what? That's what the true salvation of God is. It's not blood. Blood doesn't wash you. Blood can't wash you. If you think it can, watch what it does. Oh, but Christ's blood, I guess Christ's blood was white. Uh, clear. I guess. I guess that's what they're trying to tell you. Because blood stains. Okay. So back to 9. So none calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in idols, and they speak lie. They conceive, these are the men conceiving mischief and bringing forth iniquity, as in birthing it. Why now do I see every man on his hips? as if he can give life, and every face is turned pale. They slowly begin to realize their lie has no validity and can deliver nothing but injustice, cruelty, um, and in the end, nothing but death. It is only she that can deliver you in We know this after understanding. Now, this is what they did with their weave of lies. They hatch cockatrice eggs and they weave the spiders he that eateth of their eggs dieth and that which is crushes crushed breaketh out into a viper their webs shall what garments so the web of lies that have slowly weaved around the globe of all these men and men in positions of authority, just look at their faces. They're used to not being questioned. They're used to being trusted everything out of their mouth. And you better listen to whatever they tell you. That's the web of lies that men came together and began to hold in. But what are we told of their religious lies and lies? And that's exactly what's in view with these web of lies. It will not become a garment. What did it say? In Revelations 3.18, we'll go back. Become rich and white clothes to wear so you can cover your shameful nakedness. It will not be lies that the men called Baal, your forefathers, shame woman to play his harlot, bowed down at his feet, so Satan could constantly accuse her in the earth and keep and maintain control over her rightful position of power and her throne. I pick thyself up out of the dust of the earth, dear daughter of Zion, and take back your throne. Stop playing his harlot. This is my laws never put man over you. Never bought into it. You bought into that lie. And we're told that it took a great deal of honor, gnashing upon her with and, she, and swords. They came against her in a very violent manner to remove her covenant out of the land. And that is why she, so their webs shall not become garments. Neither shall they cover themselves with their works. Their works are works of iniquity. Act of violence is in their hands. That's right, dear daughter. They yoke you under their religious lies and laws. 
have to submit to man's head. It's time for you to call for justice. It's time for you to call for the truth in the land. Not 50% of the population under a man-made religious lie and law from the beginning, the false foundation laid that he was your head and he would make the laws. She was gave to you to provide the law of heaven that would keep you in the pathways of truth and eternal life and you rejected her for a harlot spirit, we're told. Their and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. When the way of peace they know not. See, we're talking about this law system. This is what it's all come about in the end. That's right. The way of peace they know not. And there is no judgment. And there isn't. They'll judge you. But fairness, truth, and equity? Uh-uh. Nope. Um, there's no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. Therefore is judgment from us, far from us. Neither does justice overtake us. We wait for light, but behold, obscurity. But we walk in darkness. What does the Shulamite say? Look not upon me, for the sun has looked upon me and made me black. That's the false light shining down. We get the representation of the heart in the beginning when she was listening as being white. And then we get it going black as she turns away from the truth of God. So she says, look not upon me. The false light has shone upon me and made me black. My mother's sons were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyard. But my own vineyard have I not. What does the daughter of Zion who sits between the cherubs as the glory of man? She shakes her head. She shakes her To whom have you blasphemed? Right? And then she says, The children have come to the birth, and there is not strength to bring forth wives. The women turning away from their own head, their own mother. Pathway, their own inheritance of truth. The religious idol, and we see that they shed blood, and they used a great deal of violence to cause it in the land against you. And you continue to perpetuate this violence by allowing him to continue on in his wicked ways. Therefore is judgment far from us. Right? We grope for the blind. And we grope as if we had no eyes. And you don't. We stumble at noonday as in the night we are in desolate. So where is the Shulamite told to come and rest? Her, when is she and rest? Her flock of she-goats? At noonday. Right? We get the reference of the noon date again to the Shulamite. We know she has the 144,000 because the camp is identified as Mahanaim. It's a double camp. We know one camp is 72,000 times two is 144,000. So we know the Shulamite has the presence of God with her, which is identified as the Shulamite. She go back to the Genesis 15 9 covenant, and that is why the Shulamite it is the daughters back in the rightful airship of the law. The law was to be found at their mouth. Um, we roar all like bears and mourn sore like doves. We look for judgment, but there is salvation, but it is far off from us, and indeed it is. The more they look for, oh, they're enraptured. Um, it says their own desires is, is what's condemning them. Uh, and that's found in Timothy, I believe, that particular and I may have the wrong verse, of how they've, they've fell forth into their homes, these men of, who were ordained from old. He's into the home and more or less heaps sin upon the woman's head and then tells her about a man, God's Savior, who loves her so much that he died for her. And she gets so enraptured by this idea that she can't anymore, that she can't even reason that she allows his accusations to continue upon her head over and over again instead of standing up. Blood don't wash you, water does. Isaiah 4.4, 4, she says, I will wash the blood off of my daughters once again. And she's talking about that's when she gives back her truth, her, her spirit upon them. So, uh, we stumble at noondays in the night. We are in desolate places as dead men. We're just like 
like dead women now. Uh, we are the eternal ones. We were... Uh, and the idea uh, of remembrance does have the work, the idea that these are memories from a, a prior exist, like you're eternal. Um, I looked it up at Eberim Publications, the, the Greek word for remember. Uh, and it does have the idea that the memories that you have, you have a portion of spirit that is allotted to you, but it was always you. So the memories that you have that are authenticated it, are your personal memories, is what I got out of that. That's it. If I think to, I will post the link below this video. Um, but there is none for salvation, but it is far off from us. That's why, because you're enraptured with a lie. Your own desires are leading you away into sin, into a false path. Um, for our transgressions are multiplied before thee, and our sins test, and they do. That's what's coming back upon your head. For our transgressions are with us, and as for, for our iniquities, we in transgressing and lying against the Lord, and departing away from our God, in oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart falsehood. That's where we're at. We're in the land of Egypt, idol worship. Deity is another name for Baal. Baal is another name for Lord and your master in your head. And we see him marrying himself. Even though it's Baal the wife there in Isaiah 54. Because she's spouting back everything he wants. That's the Jezebel in the land. She was raised up in idol worship. Her father was Eth. Uh, so we know that he hearkened to this notion that man was God. We also see, I believe it was King Darius, who made the decree that you would listen to no other God but him. When you brought he would determine what would be considered right and what. So, yea, truth faileth. She that departeth from evil maketh herself a prey. In the Testament, they gnashed and they pierced upon the dear daughter of Israel. We're told that by Jeremiah himself, he was with the dear daughters in Jeremiah 9, verse 1, I believe it is, where they pierced and they have murdered the dear daughter of my people. We will for uh, as if we weeped for a firstborn. It was daughter. Oh, got son there. It's the firstborn, and the firstborn is identified as the daughter of Zion herself. And they were murdering her, and these spirit on their head, which were wisdom in the land, uh, holding the law of God, and they were them and murdering. They were the bulls of Bashan circling her in Psalm 22, just as they were the dogs that were piercing her hands and her feet. Another word for male harlot tree. They Jeremiah 6, I think it is, they were as um, stallions, neighbors' wives, you see. Um, and then they were allotting themselves, these daughters, uh, through violence that they were with them. So the truth is fallen in the street in equity. And she did. She fell in the streets. They murdered her. Uh, yea, truth. Reread that one. It's a good verse. Isaiah 59, 14. And just way backward. That's the land we're living in now. And just start off for the truth is fallen in the street. Fairness and honesty cannot enter in. It says this world will not receive. They don't want nothing to do with her. Yea, truth faileth. She that departeth from evil maketh herself a prey, and they did the men. And the Lord saw it, and it displeased her that there was no judgment, no righteousness, no fairness. Uh, and because of what it says in Malachi chapter 2, they were right. That's a reference to the priests of Israel, and we know that their law system that subjugates women. <clears throat> Fed out to the four corners, eliminated us. That's right. Under Baal worship, she saw that there was 
no man, <clears throat> no, no wonder that there was no intercessor that will be the daughters reborn out of the dust of the earth. Her arm brought salvation unto her and her righteousness. It, and I it sustained her. Uh, so she looks for her daughters, her rightful inheritance to support her, but they do not fell to the idol of a man as Lord and God. They have turned their back. It's mad at some point. She completely turns her back on them. But we also, um, as the Lord, this is a perfect description of threshing the nations. Actually, in Isaiah 3, is it? Okay. Let me see if I can get Isaiah here. I think is to victory. That's through your daughters. And now, oh, uh, what was the name? Uh, six two. Ah, uh, let me. See if I, you, and it meant victors, the victors in the land. Um, um, so it's it's Strong's Hebrew. See, we can find it here. Uh, uh, yeah. It is. Is what I believe it to be. I'm sorry. Yeah. Feminine salvation. Is strong Hebrew. A-H. The A-H signifies the feminine aspect. Um, deliverance, help, victory, that, victory. So here in uh, um, 63, it's titled Victory, and it's she who in Isaiah, uh, where was he, 59, what does she say? For she put on righteousness. No, uh, verse six. Saw that there was no man, no woman, and wondered intercessor. Therefore, her arm brought salvation unto her. So there's many ways of looking at this passage, and her right sustained her. So she never left the path of God. If we're talking about uh, the Lord 136 who came off these daughters, but understand there's her mother that she has to answer to um, for what the daughters were doing away from her spirit. Um, the idea is that earth has a spirit as female, uh, and they turn from her. They turn from the spirit of, of the earth, of her that was ordained by God's birthright. The children here was to hearken to the spirit of her cousin. She sees that there is no man to support her or to uphold her. She also sees that her own right hand has left her, which is where we get, we have left, um, our own dwellings have cast us out. We get that again in Jeremiah 9. We daughters lament as you would for a, a, an only daughter. And we're piercing and gnashing upon the daughter to remove her covenant of the land, which is why we get the victor, a perfect description of her, victory, Hebrew 344, Isaiah 63, that cometh from Edom with dyed garments, right? From Basra. So we talk, you read that chapter, it's all about her threat, the wine press. They'll want to put this as Jesus, it's not Jesus. 36, um, that is threshing the nation. Who begets her firstborn, gets her back once more. She says of her in Psalm, the heathens and I'll give them all. They're for you to do with what you will. You never left my pathway. You are my begotten. You are my firstborn. Begotten means birth. It's not a father sitting there on the throne birthing. 
I don't know how he birthed a son. Uh, or she put on righteousness as a breastplate. That's her again. In 63. Um, she put on as righteousness. Right? The scepter righteousness. And a breastplate of righteousness is means I will protect you. God is saying, I will protect you. And a helmet of salvation upon her head. She put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal of cloak. Now it seemed like there was that I learned about helmet <clears throat> that wasn't true. Um, but I can't remember it at this point. Let me see helmet. Let me see. Somewhere. Um, helmet. A helmet of salvation. Okay. So that's not ringing any bells. Um, I did pick it up somewhere though. <clears throat> okay, so we keep reading here and I'll be done. Okay, so verse 17. For she put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation upon her head and she put clothing and was clad with zeal as a cloak. So that is so a description of her. 63. She's also found as the one that's pulled out of the waters. The peoples. Um, she's drawn out. Um, uh, God asks where is she who placed her spirit upon man. Where is she? Um, and, and she's calling her forth because Court case, and it says, Arrange your conversation in order in Psalm 50. Whoever orders your conversation aright, asking the right questions, I will show. So, if you have questions in this whole man made religion that teaches Jesus is God and made everything and, and all the stars of heaven and oh, he filled them with life and all that, if that don't reason to you, order your conversation right questions and the spirit will provide you with the answer Those that sets their case right that is going to be called by the ancient of days and you will act that is what is promising to the daughters um, and you will get double that's your XX you have the XY XX they will receive double um, according to their deeds according she will repay so if you're walking in the way and you have the no worries. But uh, if you will not turn from your wicked ways, you will be cut away. I believe that is what God calls the final solution, cutting wickedness away. Um, there is, in some sense, that you cannot rehabilitate wickedness. You can't. When it goes so far, you cannot rehabilitate it. And so when God says, if they're found not holding the seal of God, my way, my truth, if not, they're not found holding my way, and, and they're bound to a religious law and a religious idol that I told you never to have before you, then you are not found holding my seal. My, you walk in my way, whether male or female. You are equal in my eyes. And if you do not, then you will be cut away. That is the final solution, according to God. There's nothing else you can do. You cannot redeem them. She says, I've given you this, this lot of time to see of time to see if you will turn. He will turn from his wicked ways. And he has not. He has continued to walk after his idol that he wants so He wants woman to be his harlot down at his feet. That's what he wants. Equality. Truth of God he can't deal with. No, he don't want nothing to do with it. Well, pair of scissors. And yes, it does take us to the circumcision, the foreskin. Because uh, the foreskin covenant with the harlot spirit in the land uh, that exalts a man. Um, and it's... It, I mean, I don't know how anybody can't figure that out. They've got all ideas of what the foreskin represents. He tried to grow a second one for Pete's sake. Because he wanted the harlot. He didn't want the righteous. You get it? And it sounds crazy. Tried to grow a second one. Yes, he did, of course. And God says, your covenant will be with me and my righteous daughters. We will cut you away, the wicked. You get it? 
That's the symbology of the foreskin. So, according to their deeds, according she will repay, will repay fury to her adversaries, recompense to her enemies, to the islands she will repay. That's these planets. So in her birthright seems to be in court. Yeah. This is a heavenly battle going on. Second and third heaven. Second heaven, for all of our understanding, would mean outer space. Um, we also get a heavenly battle being played out in Judges chapter 5. And it has to do with the planets out there. It has to do with the stars out there. And we know this planet Earth has a upon it. Um, so shall they fear the name of the West and her glory from the rising of the sun when the enemy flood the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. What's the standard study? And now I can't remember. I really cannot remember it. But the standard here is important because it's going to take us to um, what they said, the apostasy um, uh, the departure of the Holy Spirit will not come until the departure from the truth, the apostasy that have you believe, which is oh crappers. Um, we actually get our perfect understanding of what this is. Uh, where am I? It is. Yeah, the uprising. Down here. So I get a better rendering of this first. I'm sorry, I did not expect this video to be. There it is. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and her glory. The sun, the true sun, the true light of God. It's red. Um, I will make your pinnacle of ruin. The true, I will lay in Zion, a tried and tested stone. Um, and your pinnacles of ruby, that's a red sun. It's feminine in that particular passage. When the enemy shall come in. And the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. The Spirit of the Lord. This takes us to Ezra chapter 13 is what I see there. And the Spirit of the Lord in the earth was identified as the presence of God, which was identified as the women. The Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. When he comes in to surrender and to attack her with his religious lies and laws, she Spirit of the Lord and lifts up a standard. What's the standard? What's the standard here. Okay, so to get this in context, computers, even my good computer is slow. Okay, um, standard. So to get this in Okay, okay, we're going to. Go here. Come on. So. Uh, okay, so the verse we're looking for, 2 Thessalonians 2.3. Okay, where's my site? Is that my site? Yeah. So. What's it speak? It speaks of the what the man, man lawlessness. Why do they incorporate lawlessness? You know, I found a word when I was studying uh, commentaries. To uh, it may have been this particular passage. Yeah, I got this down as being a video I want to make. It is this. Um, and what does it doesn't deceive you in any way? For that day will not come until the rebellion occurs. And the man of lawlessness is revealed. Lawless. Word for lawlessness is in um, is in Greek. Is anti. Anti means against. Nomian. Anti. Nomian means law. Against law. That's the Antichrist against her law. So don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come. Man of lawlessness 
the antinomian, the antichrist against her law unto the God that she desires, a God of fairness, truth, and equity. We get it yet? And the man doomed to destruction is revealed. Now, let's go back to, oh, where was it? It's right there, right there. That we were just looking at in Isaiah 59. To flee, escape. Um, word. Word up. That's it. No. No, no. It's not this word. It's the actual. He found in Jeremiah 6 1 because they will do this often in the Old Testament they'll throw multiple words at you um, to try to mix you up so that you can't follow the truth out uh, is it here okay to Jeremiah 6 because that's where our standard is six parallel if I ain't got this mixed up because I didn't go in and recap it, how my line of thinking was going. Yeah. Okay. So Jeremiah 6. Uh. Okay, so let's do this. Um, o ye children of Benjamin, gather yourself to flee out of the midst of the trumpet in Tekoa and set up a sign of fire in Betha Serum for evil appearance great destruction. Well, this was the first time around, right, when they were destroying the daughter of Zion and accusing her of many things. To which she also says in Isaiah 59, you accuse me of things that... And I, uh, which is what he took to God with, to accuse God mother, to accuse her with. Um, but the standard here that we get fire is <clears throat> 4864, uprising. Right? So we just found that verse. And don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs. And the man of lawlessness. So the rebellion is when women, for their mother's house, for themselves, for their, their rightful inheritance in the land. And all of a sudden this man of lawlessness has come to his temple. That's who that's going to be. He's already got his people set in place. It's going to fall down at his feet and worship him. Um, and it's going to be Jesus kind of cover that one up some way and they're just going to say look he's come you know he's come with you and you're going to fall down and you're going to worship that and he's really going to be the lawless one the lawless one revealed because man was not to play God she put her over whomever she chose to put over it come from her and it was rightfully her inheritance the daughter so let no man deceive you you not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed the son of no man the one against her law the one who wants to play God so let's look up 2 Thessalonians 2 3 on interlinear and the word uh, apostasy 646 they're going to tell you it's feminine oh it's feminine <laughs> uh, that's the true adversary against the harlot spirit raised up the true chosen one of God a uh, defection 
a revolt. Leave, depart. Now they're going to tell you literally a leaving from a standing, from a previous standing, a lie, an absolute lie, off of Baal's tongue, who is the idol, from Daniel 2, a falling away or a defection. A defection from the truth. No, that's the man-made religious lies and laws in the land. We know that. Word here. Where is it? Oh. oh, I just had it. Why I say I just had it? Okay. Okay. I had the word pulled up. Now I can't. Fine. Sorry. I'm still looking for it. I've got so many tabs up. Right? That's the word we're looking for. So, in Isaiah 59, 19, So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west, and her glory from the rising And like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard again. So the standard that gets lifted up, they have not the correct word here. Right? We actually have to go to Jeremiah didn't read it, so I should read it. It's not working. Okay, so 5127, verb to escape. Um, escaped, fled, runs away, taken refuge in the truth finally. There's an apostasy of falling away from the religious lies of Baal. That's what's going on. That word also in Thessalonians will also live in divorce. She's divorcing, divorcing this fallen Adam and his religious lies. Uh, to hide, vanish away, uh, be displayed, lift up a standard, a new standard is what we're looking at. So what uh, six one, the standard. Okay. What's the standard? Is 4864 is the word you want to be hitting on in Jeremiah 6 1. I'm dismembered her body. You see the bones lying uh, in the mouth of Sheol out in the front of it. She does, is reborn, we're told. And when Ephraim is finally addressed to come forth, where is she who placed her spirit upon Moses, it says, 63, she calls that spirit out of the earth, and she asks, okay, what's going on? He's telling me that you wanted this. That's what he's telling me, because you're going along. did nothing to perpetuate it. He's innocent of the whole thing. Forget the great violence that he did this upon her head and he uses the law to do it with he used violence to perpetuate that law 864 Maseth an uprising utterance her burden to restore the children back to her mother portion noun feminine an utterance burden portion cloud there's your cloud of witnesses it's not masculine your cloud I have placed the cloud, the cloud that she placed between us was the false witnesses. Once these witnesses stand up, that, that truth rises, right? Who is this that smoketh out of the wilderness like a cloud? She's smelling a sweet scent unto her nose. It's like tea, a, a load of dung from Baal, right? She's smelling her daughter once again, and it smells sweet to her, her firstborn. Get the firstborn of my womb. You know, they may have forgotten her. They made sure they did. The snare they laid for 
Us daughters to fall into these neckline and sinker, they butt into it all. The truth? They want nothing to do. Your daughter, buy the truth and sell it not, and be the uprising in the land that you need to be. Burden, collection, sign of fire, grace, lifting up, oblation, properly, as of the hands in a prayer, a rising, a flame, figurative, an utterance. So we saw this, this being a symbol of her future posterity. In when the seraphim or cherubim grabs the, the, the flames of coals or the coals, um, the angel's wings there in uh, Ezekiel chapter 7, and is told to cast them out into the land. When you go in and you look the word up for coal there, it means a future posterity that will rise up in the land, which is also why we get the smoking furnace before in God's covenant, which is also symbolic of the parting of the Red Sea into the two covenants, which is why you get the male, the female, uh, the turtle dove, and the pigeon, each place is a female covenant, but the word of God, which is a sharp sword that will see the admixture of doctrines, which they defiled her law system by putting blood into it. The admixture of doctrine. Then the daughter got drunk on it, went to sleep, so he could expose her nakedness. That's Habakkuk 2 15 and 16. And at the end, they awaken the Lord, the warrior that's been drunk on wine. And the Lord there that does so awaken is 136 at that laid like an ash heap as a dove once again, and her wings will be coated in gold and silver. You find that in Psalm 16. So 136, she is the Lord of Lords. Denied. So, hands in prayer, figurative, an utterance, concretely, a beacon, uh, as raised, as taken, mass or tribute, figuratively, a reproach. Burden. So, the burdens upon these daughters, we know it was a reproach to these daughters who rise up. That's in Zephaniah 3.18, which is right here. Let's look at it. So the rising up who is antichrist or antinomian, anti-anointed one. He's against the true anointed, which was the daughter, which was the true anointed one. He's the true antichrist. Christ upheld her law. And he never once says, it's me, it's me, it's me. He says, when she comes, you won't blaspheme her this time around and get away. She came in, she'll give you an allotted amount of time to turn from your wicked ways and get things straight in the land, or she'll show up in the end and you will be judged when the overflowing scourge or the host comes in to finally cut away the wicked that won't turn from their wicked ways. That's how it works. Um, we know it's daughters. It says daughters. It says women. It does not say men. It's not me saying it. It's there in the verse of Zephaniah 3.18. Burden and a reproach unto you. No, um... I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly, who are of thee to whom the reproach of it was. These women carried this lie, and it was a reproach. I tell you, you know, sacrifice for sin one time offering. No, nope. Um, um, they eat meat. God says you wanted meat in your basket. I did not. To have meat in your basket that went against God's law, but you wanted it because you you got a hunger for that in the idol worship in the land of Egypt, which is where we are. Um, so behold, at that time I will deal with all who afflict you. I will set the scattered, and I will appoint praise and fame for the disgrace throughout the earth. That's the daughters. This is Zephaniah chapter three, and it.
I'll gather them to me. So let's go in all on the chapter so you get the understanding it is talking about women. Um, I will gather them uh, beholding to, at that time I will undo all that afflict thee and I will save her that halteth and gather her that was driven out and I will get them pray, praise and fame where they have been put to shame. At that time will I bring you again even in that time that I gather you for I will make you a name and a praise among all when I turn back your captivity before your eyes, saith the Lord, those who have become encaptured in a religious law and law. The seal of God in your forehead, when the overflowing scourge appears, you will be cut away. That's your beginning and your end. Two thousand years ago was not the first coming of Christ, Antichrist. No, she came in the very beginning. She's a rejected stone. She was the anointed. Christos. The anointed one. Antinomian means they were against her law. And it was her law that they were to uphold. And they did not. For what portion of God is there from above? Almighty from on high. That's what Job says. Why then should I look upon a maid? For what portion of God is there from above? It was the whole she. Now, that's the video. I apologize for it being so long. Um, here we go. Uh, I pray the Lord blesses you um, with an abundance of the truth. I pray you allow her to counsel you. Buy gold tried in the fire. Anoint your eyes. Be willing to let wisdom show you the truth. Open your ears. Fall into the, the ditch of following a male idol. Don't him to come and get you because he's not going to. He's not. Uh, anyway, watching this video, I hope I can upload it. Again, it may take me quite a while to get a new video that will actually work and do what I need it to. I uh, pray you bear with me. Or, or done. I don't know. I'll try to find a way to tell you either way. Either a message under uh, one of my final videos. I'll tell you I'm done because I have to be or whatever. Okay, I thank you for watching. I pray the Lord blesses you with an abundance of truth. Have a lovely day. Thanks again.